Hello. All right, so um, pick up where I left off. Basically, Tulsi had tweeted uh, about this law that she had put forward in uh, Congress to uh, to make federally funded sports that were that were divided by gender to be divided biologically as opposed to divided by gender identity. Um, which makes sense. I mean, the whole point of dividing by gender is not about identity. It was never like, well, we had to separate the boys and the girls because they identified differently. No, it was about biology. So people who want to keep boys and girls separate, but they want it to be based on identity are crazy people or I don't know. Very interesting thought process there, at least. Um, so, uh, so Tulsi is trying to basically defend all these girls, many girls and women who had come forward and and had gone to court and and done all kinds of things to try to have their maintain their uh, sports as as their own as sports for biological females. Um, and so she was coming to actually try to help them with a law in Congress. And, um, <clears throat> you know, she got trashed on Twitter. She got trashed, you know, she tweeted about the law. I think she did one or two tweets and then those got trolled by all these people. And so she did like a follow-up tweet, but she didn't get like anything near ratioed in anything. Like she got trolled by like, the kind of, you know, loudest, angriest white Twitter leftists and just like SJWs or whatever. But like she didn't get ratioed. Like she got like, I think it was maybe there was one that had like uh, 10,000 likes and like 1,000 comments. And even like half the comments were in her favor. So like, the people like trolling her thought they were ratioing her or thought they were like, you know, putting this renegade, you know, crazy lady in her place or whatever. But um, I think a lot of them quickly figured out that they were the minority and that most leftists and most people just generally agree with her. And that's not to say, like when I say most leftists, like most people who identify with the left, like they are often not the activists. A lot of the activists like who are just hardcore political junkies are, you know, very tribalistic partisans and are often less leftist than people who just identify as leftists or, you know, like have leftist beliefs, but are not always like uh, super active about it. <clears throat> like I would say, the activist community has arguably done as much or more to sabotage the left as they have done to further its uh, goals. And that's partly just by being scum and by, you know, punching people for having Trump hats and for, you know, calling people Nazis for, uh, you know, voting for Trump or just like all these, I mean, Voting for Trump is a Nazi thing to do, but so is voting for Hillary Clinton, so is voting for Biden. Um, and so a lot of these SJWs, like they might act like they're far leftists, but they're really covering for the right-wing Democrats because you find that they tend to demonize the, um, or a lot of them, you know, they demonize the Trump supporters a lot more than they demonize like Biden supporters even though a lot of the Trump supporters are actually anti-war and a lot of Biden supporters are CIA war contractors and stuff. So, yeah. Um, Angela Walker, the Green Party vice presidential candidate for 2020, my friend on Twitter, um, basically she decided to weigh in and and basically regurgitate all the uh, woke talking points of how Tulsi is this terrible transphobe and whatever, and, and uh, this is unacceptable, and 
it was like there was no reason to weigh in at all. Like Howie didn't weigh in. How I mean, Howie shared her thing. Maybe he thought maybe that would take the edge off people thinking he's a turf, but um, or thinking he's transphobic or whatever. But um, but yeah. So she tweeted that. He retweeted it. Then she had to do another tweet because a lot of people were like a lot of green people and a lot of her followers were disgusted by it and were like Tulsi was right. And, and so she did another tweet and she doubled down or whatever. And um, so I stayed following her, you know, like she stayed following me through all kinds of drama. And like, I still love her at least on some level, but I also have, fear her. Like, I also think like if she really thinks that we have to force girls to compete against biological males, then I couldn't really trust her in any position of power. You know, that's child abuse. Um, so, so yeah, this is like, I was willing, even after the Georgia thing, uh, even after I heard about the party kicking Georgia out, I still kind of got some hope because I thought, A, they, you know, they nominated Howie, even though people thought he was a problematic turf or whatever, uh, you know problematic uh you know like even though he basically pissed off the 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 wokesters and, and they in they painted him as a transphobe but he still got nominated by the greens so it told me oh maybe the greens are not so susceptible to this kind of uh you know leftist sabotage or whatever or like uh woke sabotage and um you know, and then and the fact that he branched out with the with the Socialist Party gave me a lot of hope that he was like ecumenical in that sense. And like, I still have some hope. You know, I ho I hope like they make good, and I hope this issue resolves for the best. But um, you know, and then the other thing was the fact that uh, Angela Walker herself. Um, like she assured me personally that they would be cautious in in uh, the response to COVID, that they would not, like I was telling her like, yeah, we need a huge response. We need, you know, UBI, we need all this, you, meta, you know, M4A, we need all this stuff to help with COVID, but we don't need authoritarianism. You know, we need the carrot, not the stick. And, I think she took on board what I was saying and the fact that I was cautioning her against trusting anything from, uh, or at least being too trustful of anything from Big Pharma because we know exactly um, how Big Pharma operates. And, um, you know, we know that the same people that say trust the vaccine, trust the vaccine, a lot of them were probably saying, trust Monsanto, you know, trust the pesticides, trust the genetically modified foods, et cetera. So, um, <clears throat> so that was great. You know, she like listened, heard me out and she assured me that she would, uh, you know, be cautious and, and careful and all that. So that gave me hope that made me want to stay with the greens. Um, and then just the fact that she was my friend uh, on that she followed me back on Twitter and that she didn't unfollow me despite all the woke canceling that I was, you know, I was woke canceled like every few weeks or something or every week, like there's somebody canceling me and at least at least one of them tagged her. But I would imagine probably more of them tagged her because what they do is they tag they tag all of your like mutual followers and especially whatever is the bigger accounts because they try to you know like mess with the big accounts and make sure that at least nobody of consequence would follow me or whatever but she didn't listen to them she stayed following me you know and it, maybe maybe she didn't see any of that but i highly doubt it because it was happening a lot they tagged her and and i, I post gender critical stuff like a lot i mean not it's not the main thing i tweet most everything i tweet is just socialist uh, but 
you know, it would be normal that at least once a day or something, I would tweet some stuff about gender critical issues and about, uh, you know, detransition trans, you know, children who were transitioned as children and then thought better of it later on and are suing the doctors and et cetera and the adults who, who encouraged it. Um, so I tweet this stuff all the time and yet she stayed following me. So I thought like, oh, maybe they're not so beholden to woke stuff. Um, uh, although I did see her tweet, I think, you know, a, few, a month or two ago, whatever, something against J.K. Rowling. So I knew not to expect too much from her in terms of bucking the uh, PC uh, crowd. But this, to me, like, I mean, that that definitely perturbed me. This, you know, her jumping on the anti-J.K. Rowling uh, witch hunt. But um, but what perturbed me more was like jumping on the anti-Tulsi witch hunt because this is not just a matter of opinion, like, um, you know, and it's not just, I mean, the issue of, I think may, maybe Rowling was either just talking about the straight up question of, of gender identity and whether there is a difference between uh, male biological males and biological females or whether there's a difference between cis women and trans women and also maybe the issue of uh, bathrooms and since I like I don't have a super strong position on the bathrooms issue although I tend to I would say in places where a, a large amount of women are concerned about it then that should be the primary that's what who we should listen to like if you're in a place where i guess every woman says it's cool to uh, ha open the women's restrooms to trans women then uh then as far as i know that should that could be fine but i don't know if there is such a place and what i do know is from looking online a lot of women have misgivings about it. A lot of women in America, you know, in the US, a lot of women in Canada, a lot of women in Britain. And these are like the places where the trans movement is the strongest. So if there's that many women in these places who are not, you know, who are still scared to have trans women in the bathrooms, partly due to a high crime rate and violence rate, among trans women that is you know i mean I, I guess you could say it's i mean maybe it's just as high as men cis men basically that uh basically cis women to use that i'm not a fan of the word cis but just to be clear like cis women do not they're not violent on anywhere near the scale of cis men or trans women and they're not convicted of rape on anywhere near the scale of cis men or trans women so therefore a lot of them want to keep the bathrooms uh, just biological women cis women so i fully respect that and i i so i tend to that uh, side of it but at the same time i don't really weigh into it too much because i'm not a woman so I just try to listen to women and uh, highlight their uh, concerns. And so, you know, she condemned uh, J.K. Rowling for that, and it was disappointing, but it was what it was. I was still willing to uh, support her and work with her and hope that she uh, was elected, or I'm not sure if that was before or after the election, but, uh, but, with this thing with Tulsi where she's condemning Tulsi for protecting girls it's a totally different issue or is a yeah it's a different issue because in this case we can point to at least three cracked skulls and possibly countless cracked bones in you know across sports across the world of this new phenomenon over the last decade of 
trans women and trans girls competing against biological girls and just physically and uh, competitively clobbering them. And so this is, you know, girls' safety. Um, so it's, I mean, it's kind of despicable not to join in or not to support, not to like, you know, kind of uh, second uh, what what Tulsi was doing or, or you know, like provide uh, at least, you know, rhetorical support for it. I mean, whatever, like, but I'm saying like, she could have just ignored it and that would have been that. She could have just said, okay, this is some culture war issue that every, this is very divisive and I'm not going to try to alienate vast majority of workers and a lot of my own supporters by trashing her for this. But no, she trashed her for it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted on that because I do still have a lot of gratitude and respect for her. But to the extent that her, she or anybody wants to force girls to compete against biological males and have their bones broken, because that's the biggest issue. Males' bodies, the bone structure is much more robust and females much more gracile. And even with puberty blockers, that's not... Um, then that's somewhat uh, mitigated, but not really obviated uh, in any decisive way. So, and a lot of women and girls who have competed against trans women, trans girls, have testified to this, that it's not anything like uh, you know, getting punched by in the face and getting your skull cracked by a trans woman. It doesn't feel anything like being punched by any of the women who, you know, like there's the women who had been punched by a million women before and they could tell you that the punch that they got, the, the you know, when the trans woman came and cracked their skull, it was not anything like all their previous fights. So, um, so in my opinion, like people who support this are terrorists uh, and dangerous and like enemies of mankind, really. Like, you know, people think Trump supporters are Nazis and should be punched. Uh, I mean, if anything, there's a much better argument that people who want to force girls to... Uh, to get brutalized by uh, biological males are Nazis and should be punched. Uh, don't punch Angela, but just try to talk some sense. And like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sh if anybody <laughs> sees this has any influence over her, try to talk some sense into her. I mean, I've already tried, I think myself. I sent her some messages about it. Um, but either way, it's like the signs are there um, after what happened to Georgia and what's continuing with Georgia and then that her tweeting that and then Howie retweeting it tells me that the winds, the winds within the Green Party are going in that woke SJW PC uh, bullshit direction and um, so I would say yeah there's still like they apparently still haven't uh, officially kicked out the Georgia Greens and that will be the uh, that will be the thing to watch in terms of whether there's any hope for the Green Party um, but yeah, if they if they just kick them out or just replace them with uh, you know woke people or whatever people that want to abuse children or want to support the abuse of children, then um, they will have given the finger to the working class, just to the masses, to the non-college woke uh, people of the entire world, and they will deserve the fingers every finger back. 
uh, you know, I mean, y'all could have won Georgia. You know, there's people that want to vote green in Georgia, but you told them, you're not woke enough. We're kicking you out of our party. Nobody should ever vote for you for anything if that's the way that you operate. I mean, we'll see. Hopefully they won't actually kick them out. But the, the you know, I've never seen anybody defend them. I just see all the green activists condemn them and just take it as a given that they're bad and have to be removed. So you have to be, you know, it's like if you think us, the 99%, the working class who is not woke about your gender nonsense, if you want to remove us, we're going to remove you. So that's how that works. So for this reason, uh, these two signs, it was like I was willing to kind of ignore the, the Georgia situation. But now with Angela's tweet, that was like the last straw, the last sign that I needed that the Greens are not a fertile um, they're not fertile grounds for a populist party. They're college wokies. So, I mean, I don't know if she's a call. I don't know if Angela is a college wokey, but she's definitely chimes in with that chorus. So, not not representative of workers. And um, so, that's why we need a new party. I think. Like, I'll still try to stay abreast of it try and i'll definitely support the georgia people to try and stay in but they ha i mean i haven't heard anything from them i think i tried to contact some georgia people on twitter they never replied so i mean if they're not willing to fight for it themselves then i'm not willing to either like if if there's nobody in the green party that's willing to fight against this woke uh, insanity then I have no interest in the Greens and neither would the working class. Um, so uh, I'm going to be looking in the direction of a new party, you know, and, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully the Greens will surprise me. And if I see some reason for hope, I'll, I will lend my efforts to help it. But for now, I'm looking elsewhere. Um, the most immediate thing is in March, the People's Movement for a People's Party, which is basically run by the same type of woke white, you know, uh, Nazis that are these green, uh, green wokies. I mean, and a lot of this is the same crowd, although a lot of the MPP people or some of the MPP people are anti green. Um, you know, I think there was, uh, there was one major account on Twitter that said, like, that was uh, associated with the Movement for People's Party and the United Left that claimed that the Green Party is too leftist, so we can't, we don't want them because they're too leftist. And he didn't mean, like, stuff like this. He didn't mean woke stuff. I think he meant, like, they're too socialist. So because he's one of the biggest SJWs himself. So that's the thing. It's like a lot of this woke stuff, people think that's the left. Like if that's the left, you can find lots of Republicans who agree with all that stuff. You can find lots of Biden supporters who agree with like that, you know, you're a Nazi if you misgender somebody or whatever. That's a sign that that's not leftism, that that's not the actual leftist issue when you have like, all the corporations of the world lining up behind it like you know most of the corporations they're all like super gender woke and you have all the people like caitlin jenner who are basically right wing as hell um yeah it's not a leftist thing that like people just think leftism is something where you know it's just the culture war has taken over the the class war has been subsumed by the culture war as intended by the elites to where people think that is the left. They think the left is where the right, like if you're, if you are for white males, white male Christian, cis white male 
hetero Christians or something, then you should vote. Then you should, then you're right wing basically inherently. And if you hate those people, and then you are left wing. And it's not like a real politics, you know, it's, it's disgusting. Um, so yeah, I, I, a lot of the biggest enemies of the left have always been on the left and there's always been people uh, rational and, and honest enough to know that and acknowledge it. Um, you know, Cromwell, Robespierre, Stalin, Mao, um, you know, there's all kinds of people who can insinuate in themselves into leftist movements, but they don't have any egalitarian bone in their body. And, um, so yeah, like basically the M the movement for a people's party, it's something that came out of the Bernie campaign, I guess, or people that were working on the burning campaign especially nick brana who apparently was some uh some kind of bernie staffer and uh so it's been in the works i think it came out of uh, the r revolution group pretty sure and um it was like a way to carry that on but then basically a lot of the people involved in it realized that it was just the nick brana show and it's just this guy and and whatever he wants and it didn't make any sense because in 2020 they've been saying like like you know in the spring whatever they got all into the people's movement for a people's party and they said yeah we need a people's party the democrats are uh are not even all that leftist so we need a leftist party wouldn't that be cool whatever it's like meanwhile the green party already existed and the movement for a people's party is if anything just worse than the green party you know it has all the same flaws but just more of those flaws because the people who are associated with it who also tend to be the hashtag united left people um are the you know they are the white twitter wokesters they're like the worst of the worst that go around like you know attacking Tulsi and attacking random people for stepping out of line um, and like canceling people on Twitter. They're like a mafia, honestly, on Twitter. They've canceled a lot of my friends. And uh, so, but they're having a convention in March and I uh, am, have the understanding that they, that anybody can attend. I'm not sure if it's physical, you know, in real life or if, it's a, a online cyber convention, but um, but either way, I'm guessing it's a cyber convention. I should look into this, but uh, basically, there's a plan underway, led I think led by some of the people that were in it originally, and then realized it was bad and realized that it was a Nick Brana kind of tyranny. Um, so they have a plan to get hella people to come to the convention and then use their numbers to outvote the Brana loyalists and the kind of these, you know, MPP, United Left, um, this kind of woke mafia of, of white leftists and, and uh, clout chasers and virtue signalers and whatever. So I'm down for that. I mean, I don't have like, I certainly can't say that I know it would succeed, but theoretically it could succeed. You know, I think that they, as far as I know, it's set up to where it's just majority vote. So if we're able to mob it and pack it with enough actual populace, we could turn it into an actual people's party, contrary to the uh, designs of, of the quote-unquote movement for a people's party and that would be excellent revenge for myself because they counseled me you know like many times and and my friends so that's a plan like if you can i would say google it and if anybody that's you know a leftist 
or populist of any kind and not, you know, a PC uh, Nazi or at least not, uh, you know, somebody is willing to support a party that is not, you know, PC high-handed uh, woke scolding party. Um, please join us, you know, and and we'll do this, you know, just... I think it could be, ideally, it could be one of the only um, actual instances of democracy that we get to see in these in these days, in this era, and then and then we could use it to basically uh, take down the overly woke greens and 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 hopefully and honestly, if if it wasn't like a woke disaster, like most of the left is it will attract i think it will attract not only a lot of independents and centrists and stuff but also it will probably attract libertarians it will probably attract republicans and you know trump supporters a lot of trump supporters are somewhat you know politically homeless themselves like a lot of a lot of actual trump supporters don't really identify with the republican party a lot of them are anti-war and even while a lot of them have very problematic views on stuff at the end of the day they'd be willing to support uh something as long as you know they'd be potentially willing to support something as long as it ensured an end of the wars and that they felt that they themselves were respected their rights were respected and that the uh country could be put on a better footing you know like for so many politics is a is like a challenge to alienate the other side demonize the other side and alienate the other side which is which is the right thing to do if you want to keep destroying humanity if you want to keep sabotaging the planet and the species but if you are not completely evil and worthless and you want to do a little bit of your uh, your duty as a citizen of the world to try to uh, ameliorate oppression then you should try to ameliorate the antagonism and not exacerbate it you know like politics is not a sport where we just like there are times yeah where you get into to the back and forth and obviously if somebody just hates you for some stupid reason you have my permission to go off against them but if there's hope if there's a possibility for common ground but you kick it aside because you're better than them because they're a republican and you're just so much better than them then you're probably not even better than them and in fact they might actually be better than you you know, it's as weird as that is that there could be people worse than Republicans. It's probably true. Um, so, yeah, we should take over the People's Party, you know, have a real populist party. But if that doesn't work in, in March, I believe it's March, then, then I want to start a new party. You know, especially if the Greens have kicked out the... Uh, do end up kicking out Georgia, the Georgia party, or replacing its leadership, then I will definitely be looking to start a new party. Um, and possibly with the name Liberal, the Liberal Party, because a lot of people um, have these ideas of what liberal means. And I think as some of it is leftist, who like to LARP as right-wingers because they see how fun it is for right-wingers to like castigate liberals. And so they're like, wouldn't it be edgy if we castigated liberals too, even harder than they do or just as hard? But, um, but it's very self-defeating as far as leftism goes because the people that, le that a lot of these edgelords are always calling liberals are not in any sense liberal no sense liberal they don't identify as liberal no like the like biden supporters 
vast majority of them, they don't identify as liberal. They identify as centrist. A lot of them identify as conservative, you know, like look at the Lincoln Project. Um, you know, I like Biden himself called himself conservative. He's like, I'm conservative on like every issue except for race. Which is like, he's totally conservative on race too. So that tells you something like calling them liberals is just dumb. It's just like, it's one thing as just like a colloquial thing. Like people say, like I call them shit libs because that's, I don't know. Probably people don't understand what I'm saying, but it's my way to say, instead of calling them liberals, cause they're not liberals. I call them shit libs because they sometimes pose as liberals or are seen as liberals or are called liberals, but they're not. Um, but I also just call them right wing because they are, and they are totally antithetical to every element of liberalism. You know, like the original liberals were so far to the left of almost every leftist that now exists. Like, do you see? Like people say, oh, liberalism. You're, you know, like I was canceled the other day by some stupid leftist, uh, faux leftist, you know, Twitter leftist because I to told her I'm a liberal communist. And she's like, uh, well, you would get your your ass kicked by the anarchists if they if you said you're a liberal. I'm like, try, try, step up, you know, like, um. So yeah, she said like because I call myself liberal instead of anarchist, uh, therefore you know I'm evil. And but you know she like basically canceled me on there, but. Um, yeah, so these are the people that we have as our ambassadors of the left. They will just cancel other leftists over some terminological, uh, you know, uh, quibble. And um, whereas if you look at liberalism, like go back to the liberals, like, uh, I mean, the liberal movement goes back, you know, hundreds of years. And it includes a lot of socialists, it includes, I mean, communism basically came out of the liberal tradition. And even Marx identified as a liberal in a sense, you know, he said he has the fundamental, um, you know, starting point of the liberal concept of like citizenry. So I'm, I want to reclaim liberalism. I mean, just I mean, I think it would help the left a lot to to un like reattach itself to its own roots that have been severed severed by the elites, but also severed by the left itself, because the left is very confused and self hating and and uh, uncomfortable with its own origins. So they kind of just have some little mythology of the origins of the left without really like examining it. Um, so yeah, I would call it the liberal party. And I'll, part of it also is it's like these college, these college uh, Marxists that say, okay, I'm not a liberal. Liberals are capitalists. And part of it is like, they're proud that they're like a rich kid that went to school and now they know like, what liberal means, even though they're wrong, but it's like all these regular sh poor schlubs don't even know, and they don't know. And I'm saying liberal, I'm meaning this thing, but it's totally made up. Like, I mean, you can say economically, you could say, econ like, economic liberalism is not the same as political liberalism. And anybody who thinks it is, is probably not like cognizant enough to like be of any value to politics, you know, like, um, like liberal, like obviously liberal economics, that's free trade, etc. Um, that's not liberalism. Liberalism is freedom, period. Not, not just free trade. It's like freedom and, and freedom. A lot of the early liberals understood that freedom True freedom requires uh, the end of inequality in land and resources because you can never call yourself free if 
you're born propertyless and you're born in, into the renter class while somebody else is born owning the whole town. You didn't consent to that. No, you were just born into that. So that's liberalism. And, and the thing is, a lot of these college like radicals or whatever, you know, they're, they're LARPers. Like they LARP as revolutionaries and maybe sometimes 